James Maxwell, Dr. Ginger Hamster on Twitter and Minds.com. Let's see. Let's check off the requirements here. Let's see. Nose ring. Check. Tattoo. Check. No makeup. Check. I think we got ourselves a feminist here. So I'm going to start with the title of, it, of this video that I'm a feminist and you should be too. I don't want to be, but uh, thank you. This is something that I've had a journey with, feminism. The word, saying myself, calling myself a feminist, yeah. um, has been a journey. And I think that the fact that, that it's even been something that I've questioned in the past is really sad to me. And I'm sure some of you are probably watching this being like, uh, she's crazy, of course you're a feminist, you're a female. But you could be a male feminist, or you could be a, a male non-feminist, or a female non-feminist. You don't have to be a feminist, Emily, uh, right? Well, not not actually. That That's not actually the case a lot of the time. And some of you might also be watching this thinking, yeah, I'm not a feminist. Like, yeah, I'm a female, but I'm not. So I wanted to start this video by, like, really simply educating you guys. Oh, we're going to get us an edumacation, people. If we're not a feminist right now, Emily here's going to show us why we're wrong and why we should be a feminist. And if you want to continue to educate one another down below. Uh, in the comment section, yes, yes. Please yes. do. <laughs> I took a feminist action course in my second year of university. And that was the first problem, wasn't it? And it was very eye-opening for me. So I want to talk about Bet. that. Um, but to begin, before we go any further, I really need to define feminism. The definition of feminism, Emily. Tell us what it means to you. Because this is something that I didn't know until I was, what, like 18, 19, and now I know and I have to share that the true definition of feminism is equality for all, despite gender, despite ethnicity, despite religion, despite anything else. No, it's not. Feminism is for everybody, intersectional and all this other uh, skin color, trans uh, situation, but it's not for white men, Emily. It never has and it never will be for white men. That's why most white men are not feminists. But go ahead and uh, believe in whatever delusion you, you want to. The sole root of feminism is equality. No, it's not. You already have equality. You live in Canada. You live in Vancouver, one of the farthest left locations you can, well, literally and, and figuratively, you can get in Canada. You have every single right a man has in Canada and in the Western world. It is not about equality at this point, Emily. Well, not equality of opportunity. It's about equality of outcome. Men, women, Whatever you identify as, uh, yeah. whoever you are. I'm a, I'm a guy. You can be a feminist. No, I can't. If you believe no. that we should all be equal. We are all equal under the law, Emily. And I know there's also people out there who really don't like labels. Sure, if you don't want to have a label as a feminist, don't label yourself as a feminist. But if you ha hold those beliefs, I mean, that's kind of what it is. No, no. I can believe in equality among men and women and races and religions and, and trans and, and I'm not a feminist. I am not a feminist, Emily. And I really don't think you are either, but let's continue. So that's like the beginning of what I wanted to start this video with because I think there's often a preconceived notion that like feminists are man haters. Some uh, uh, feminists are man haters, uh, Emily but not you, right? That's not the case. I obviously have a partner who's a male. So you can speak for the entire movement of feminism. Is that right? Then you know, everyone is welcome. Except if you're a white man, then you're not, Emily. Once you kind of understand that and like grasp the fact that this is not just for women, this is for everyone. No, it's not. It is not for men. You can tell me throughout this whole video, it's for everyone. It's not for men, Emily. Okay, it is not for men um i think it's like quite eye-opening so i wanted to tell yeah, you guys a story and I'd this say. is probably my first recollection or one of the big recollections i have with feminism because oh, it's nothing good. that i really like did a lot of research on or really understood when i was younger and i wish i had but it just wasn't something that i was really aware of 
Um, my first year of university, I was attending a school that was like smaller than the one I'm at now. You mean not as liberal as the one you found in Vancouver. Got it. Transferring after like my first couple semesters there. It just wasn't exciting enough for you there in that small school. And it was in the town I grew up, which is like kind of a smaller town than where I live now. Vancouver is a pretty big town, so that uh, that's a lot of Canada, you could uh, <laughs> just say. And people are just different. Their thinking was different yeah. there. And even just like, I don't know how many years ago, ago that was, like four years ago, the thinking was very different. But I remember I was in an English literature class, and we had done a reading. And I don't remember exactly what the reading was on or anything, but I remember the topic of feminism came up. English literature. Emily, I wonder what you've done majored in in college. Could I guess? I remember sitting in class. I bet it's not engineering. And actually being like, what is feminism? Because I heard all these different opinions. And I was like, I thought I knew what it was, but maybe I don't. Like all these people are saying these different things. Like maybe I have no idea. We don't have no idea what the hell feminism is about. You talk to anyone who claims they're feminist, there are so many different definitions. It seems like it's a, a movement that can fit any occasion. So while everyone was discussing it, I went on my phone and I Googled it. And I read the definition and I was like, oh, like, yeah, I can get behind that equality. Yeah, hell yeah, I believe in that, like 100%. Yeah, good thing you live in Canada then. And at the very essence of it, that is what I believe without having to label it or anything. That's where you live in Canada, where you have equal rights and you have for decades. So, so uh, what, 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 what again? What feminism? Why? And so I sort of sat there and listened. And I remember there was a girl sitting in front of me who raised her hand and started going on a about how she's not a feminist. Her understanding was obviously very off. Her understanding was off. Um, Emily, you said at that very moment you started to think you were a feminist. How would you know if her opinions on feminism were off, as you say? And I remember sitting there listening to her like declare that she's like not a feminist and how she thinks feminist is bad and stuff, and thinking like, wow, this is bizarre. I just read definition. And I'm feeling like this is totally something I can get behind. Whereas this young girl is thinking like this is a terrible, a terrible thing that we've developed over time. It is. And you've just broken one of the fundamental concepts of feminism. You called her a girl. You can't do that. She's a woman. Girl is for little children. You're a woman. How much of a feminist are you? Oh, wait. Oh, you didn't hear about that insane part of feminism yet. <gasps> Oh, you know, pink toys and calling women girls and men men. We never call men boys, do we? That's why we need feminism. And it made me really sad. And then I went to this bigger university and... Uh, you mean more uh, Marxist indoctrination camp in Vancouver. Got it. Took a feminist action course. <laughs> She took a feminist action course. I wonder what that was all about. It was very eye-opening to me. I bet. Yeah, there's lots of fucked up things that happened within this kind of realm of feminism. Well, that's the first thing you've said that's actually reasonable. Yeah, there is a lot of fucked up shit happening in feminism. But at the very core essence of what it is, it was totally something I could get behind. And when I was in class having discussions with other girls about this... Other girls... Were you in kindergarten? No, you were in college. They are women. God, you're a terrible feminist. We all had some sort of, in some sort of way, we identify with feminism. Uh, yeah, I believe the train should run on time and a good economy is good for a nation. Does that make me a Nazi? No. And there's different types of feminism. I don't know. I don't need to get into that because it's not necessary. <laughs> because you, <laughs> your video is ten and a half minutes the way it is. If you had to go into all the flavors of feminism, we would be here all freaking day. We all could identify with something. And we could all also identify with why this has become such a big deal in today's society. Like why oh, it's God. become such a big deal. To not only be willing to identify yourself as a feminist. I don't have to identify as a feminist. I like equal rights for everybody. Fortunately, we already have that, Emily. But to do things that make the world an easier place for women. An easier place, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. Feminism is all about equality between, oh, it's for men too and women. What did you just say, Emily? What, what did you just say there? Make the world 
an easier place for women. An easier place for the women. I attended the Women's March. That was in February or January. Mm. I can't even remember now. How many men were there? Uh, did they invite the pro-life feminists to walk along with them? No. Why is that, Emily? Because abortion is the sacrament of feminism. And if you do not believe in abortion right up until the kid is coming out of your vagina, you're not really a feminist. And it was so riveting. I <laughs> was emotional being there. It was. Did you have the pink pussy hat on? Very emotional. And yeah. I think like everyone is there for a different reason. Like my boyfriend was there, my dad was there, um, my sister's husband was there, and everyone is there. In that moment, that was for women. Like the empowering of women. The empowering of women. Emily, would you like to declare what exactly women need to be empowered to do? What would that be? Is there a list somewhere? Empowering women's pretty generic. What do you mean? Uh, with respect to what? Would you like to define that for us? You truly believe like at the very core of your being that we are all equal and that we all deserve an equal chance at succeeding in life, which yes, is what I yes. 100% yes, believe in, yeah. despite anything, then that is the definition of feminism. And no, it is not the definition of feminism. It might be on paper or on Google. It's not the definition. If you look at what feminism actually is doing, it is not about equality of opportunity. It is about equality of outcome. Then... That is the definition of feminism. And no. I think it's funny how uncomfortable people get with the fact that feminism has like more of a female, like a gendered female connotation, whereas like so many things are gendered male and no one questions it. Oh, let's talk about language and uh, history. Even just the word history <laughs> is his story and no one uh, questions it. Talk about real problems. Oh, history is called history. <laughs> Feminism, we need it! But when you say feminism, people are like, oh, but like, what about the men? They'll be fine. Like, honestly, they'll be fucking fine. You told us at the beginning it's about everybody, and now you're saying, ah, fuck, man, they'll be fine. Oh, my God. Also, feminism doesn't disclude men. We want to include everyone. It's inc <laughs> extremely inclusive. Now, like, the world is changing about fucking time. The world is changing, and women are in the workforce. Women are... are in universities, women are women are everywhere and they're powerful. And like I said, we are a force to be reckoned with. Women are in the workforce. Women are in the universities. <laughs> women are powerful. It's about fucking time, Emily tells us. Emily, did you like, were you born in 1930 and got in a time machine and came to 2017? That stuff has been going on for decades welcome to the current year sweetheart obviously the point of this video is not to persuade you to think the same way as me if it was uh, an effort to persuade people to think like you it didn't work but i do hope that this video has encouraged you to open your eyes yes things are getting better for women but there's still extreme disadvantages and i'm just saying in like north america it's getting better but in other places in the world like it's still horrible and women are still treated like, like... Which countries are these, Emily, in general? Which, if you had to, if you looked at a map and you had to point at the countries where women are really treated poorly overseas, which countries would these be? And why does your prime minister want to take refugees from these countries and bring them into Canada so they can bring their misogynist ways with them? Oh, see, that's, that's different. And, and I think that it's really important to be aware of this and to have a voice in this because what you have to say does matter and it has power and I think that <laughs> to believe that one person cannot make a change is the worst mindset ever to have because you have power that you don't even know. But I find it interesting she's going on and on about how powerful women are. We're powerful. We're this powerful. But you're not powerful enough to tell a guy to fuck off if he cat calls you, right? You're not powerful enough to go into a job and demand a certain salary. You're not powerful enough for that. But you're powerful. In, in exactly what way? Breathing oxygen, Emily? Exhaling carbon dioxide, isn't that bad for the planet? Global warming, maybe we shouldn't call it man-made global warming, we should call it women-made global warming. Links below, James Maxwell, thanks for listening.